Welcome friends, we are into the 8th session of ARM web development, I hope you so far have been following the classes and enjoying that too working on the lab. And in the last session we covered basic how constants are being managed for both logical and arithmetic data of instructions. Okay. So that is for operand 2 of the logical or arithmetic data processing section. If you remember Rn which was operand 1, anyway I will explain you with a diagram. So today in this session we are going to talk about logical instructions as well as arithmetic instructions and how if we do operate on R15 that is program counter, how it is going to be impacted. Okay, this is very interesting topic where you will understand the basic operations done by the processor as well the freedom that you have to work on the PC register as a, any other general purpose register is very unique to ARM, but you need to be very careful with what what to expect when you modify the values of R15. Okay. So, uh, today's session will be focusing on these two aspects. The first few will be on the logical and arithmetic processing instructions, and then we take an example of multi word arithmetic that is, you know, that ARM supports only 32 bit data or registers, right? But there may be some scientific applications where you need to do operate on 64 bit data, or it could be even 96 big data. So, if that is there is there any support from ARM so that you can even operate on data widths which are higher than 32 bits. So, we will see some examples and the instructions which support them and then the most interesting part will be how R15 could be used as a operands or as a destination register and to achieve different things ok. Good, so we are back again with the format. So, if you remember in the last class we spent whole session talking about how the operand 2 is if it is given as a register and along with some shift operation or an immediate value with some shift operation. So, if any of these values are given as an operand 2 how does barrel shifter take that operand to and operate on the immediate value uh, a shift operation as well as some constant that you have passed on along with the instruction how it takes them and then prepares the value for ALU ok. So, again I am repeating the operations performed on the using using the barrel shifter is to prepare the operand 2 for the ALU ok, it is not the ALU operation itself for the say. So, to just clarify it suppose you have a left shift logical or rotate or anything any operation you do or on the barrel shifter is only to prepare the operand 2 for the ALU, then what the ALU does is based on this opcode, the opcode is what the instruction as such it could be and or, or move or compare or anything. So, before doing this operation the barrel shifter prepares the operand for it. So, that is what we talked about in the yesterday, yesterday in the last class ok. Now, let us see what are the different operations supported by the ALU if the barrel shifter has done its job and then it has given the op operand 2 here and operand 1 anyway is always taken directly from the register file. So, you cannot do any barrel shift operation here if you want to do it suppose you want to have both the operands you want to do some barrel shifting operation ok. Barrel shift means what I am saying is any logical operations you want to do on both the operands then what you should do is you should perform that operation on R and separately on the register and then keep that ready and then you can work on the any logical operation that you want to perform on RM and then give it to AM. If you want to do it on both of them. If suppose you want to do it on only one of the operand, then you want to make sure that that operand is here so that 
in the same instruction it is done okay i hope this is clear and you know these values are this is a destination register where the outcome of this has to go and this any of course talks about rn and this rn could be a just an immediate value or it could be a rn followed with some <coughs> shifting operation or a logical operations on the balance sheet and then the operation is coming here. Now we are going to concentrate on various operations that the ILU supports provided these operands are ready ok after the respective functions are done. <coughs> this is a set of operands available the operations that ILU supports. Now a simple move ok this is very unique because it is a single operand instruction of all of them if you see the parameters here all of these other instructions have two operands to operate on whereas except for this move which operates on only single operand. So, these are the only unique single operand instructions what does it do it takes the value. <coughs> so, this single operand is it a is it R n or R n <coughs> whenever single operand is there in an instruction especially move and in the end the, in the operand is treated as operand 2 not operand 1. What is the reason operand 1 comes directly from register file. So, you cannot perform any shifting or rotating operation with the help of barrel shifter whereas operand 2 has the facility because that is a way the architecture is defined designed. So, operand 2 goes through the barrel shifter before entering ALU. So, when you have a single operand the single operand is assumed to be coming from the operand 2 entry. Then what happens to operand 1 there is nothing the move instruction does not even look for operand 1 at all ok. Now, this is a generic way any instruction is defined. So, you should be able to understand this so that next time when I show you this or when you see in any of the manual you get a clear idea. This part of that explains about what operation is requested by the instruction from the ALU ok this is the op code though the whole instruction is uh, as a binary of an instruction itself is a can be considered as op code from the higher application perspective, but within assembly the op code is only talks about the ALU operation then it will be followed by optional parameter ok. The flower brackets indicate that this may be there or may not be there in an instruction. Now, by now you should all be familiar with this this is a conditional uh, mnemonic it could be E Q or N E or A L there are so many which on table I had shown you earlier whether less than or equal to or whatever conditions and uh, this this condition is based on the conditional flags ok. If suppose if this is provided suppose M O V E Q is given then if E Q condition is satisfied only this instruction will be executed otherwise it will be considered as a no op, but it will go through the pipeline and uh, the execution stage it will not perform anything and uh, you, know, you will not feel the presence of this instruction in the user register file or in a flags in the flags. Ok, this you understood. Now, S is again I have explained multiple times this is if bit is present then the S bit in the instruction will be set and uh, which will indicate that this instruction is free to modify the flags based on the operation it performs that those flags may be impacted. So, it is not that when you put yes all the flags will be affected it again depends on the instruction some instruction may affect only one or maybe three or it may not affect one I will show you where uh, uniqueness uh, of this happens, but otherwise um, this is indicates that this instruction when it is executed if it is modifying any flag any conditions it will be reflected in the condition flag of the CPS ok. And this is the destination register and this is the operate operand to that we are talking about. So, this can go through some barrel shifting operation before moving into RD the value is moved into RD that is all about move 1 and uh, you know that MV move just moves the operand to MVN complements that 
that is not operation on it and then moves the value to RD. Now this is a whole set of instructions are there please do not read this now I will come to this point this note later. Now let us talk about every instruction what it does and there is very simple and operation of you know by a boolean uh, operation. So this bits in operand, operand 1 and operand 2 are and it with each other and the result is written into ok. And again this has a condition the you know this can be mentioned here and operand 2 is and and with R n and then the result is written into R d. So exclusive R does an exclusive R operation and subtract there is a operand 1 is subtracted from operand 2 it should be very clear which is getting subtracted from that. So always the convention is the first is considered after the destination register the first is operand 1 and the second is operand 2. So subtract subtract this value from this ok. Whereas reverse subtract does the reverse of this ok that means it is subtracting this operand 2 sorry it is subtracting the R and the operand 1 from operand 2. You may wonder why there are two instructions required for this. If you remember the diagram earlier what I showed you just we will go back I said only the operand 2 is going to the barrel shifter right. Suppose you are interested in the operation ok here we will come back. So, here you want in the reverse of that you want operand 1 to be going through the barrel shifter suppose you are interested in sorry uh, if you are you want to subtract this from this, but this one you want to want it to go through the barrel shifter. So, that is achievable in this RSB you can write it this way then it will take the operand 2 flow is always same, but if you want to subtract the operand 2 from operand 1 this is becoming easier right. This will always be the second you know uh, value which you are subtracting uh, it is going through barrel shifter here the reverse is happening right it is on this side of the subtraction. So, that is what the convenience is given to the compiler and the assembly program you can use anything, but you should be aware of what is getting subtracted from what ok. So, add a simple addition now this is uh, add with carry what is the need for it. I will explain this when the multiple adhero uh, I told you that there are uh, additions possible where the operands could be more than 32 bit wide ok. So, that kind of additions when you want to do you perform 32 bit addition and then that carry if it is coming you want to pass it on to the next set of values that you are going to perform arithmetic operation on. So, for that the carry flag is passed on to this instruction. So, this is a convenience if you want to consider the carry also to be added with the operand 2 you will be able to use this instruction to perform. So, I will show you an example here and then we will understand that. Now, subtract carry actually you are supposed to just subtract when you are subtracting the operand 1 minus operand 2 the carry you wanted to subtract from, but here it is what is written is carry minus 1 what does it mean if suppose carry flag is set you are not subtracting anything, but if carry flag is 0 you are actually subtracting 1 why is it so actually your intent was to just subtract carry. The reason being in the ARM processor the carry flag is cleared by a subtract that needed a borrow ok. It is actually a reverse of what happens if suppose there was a borrow the clear carry flag is cleared when the subtract operation was performed. So, in that case you have to do the reverse of what you would have done if carry flag was set when you needed a when the uh, subtract operation needed a borrow right. So, to com to comprehend this what is being done the SBC is implemented internally this way, but as an as a programmer we do not have to worry about this ok. You can as well as when you want to do a multi word subtracts what you should do is you first subtract the lower words with the S why S is required ok you want that subtraction to affect the flags then only you can use that carry or a borrow flag 
carry and bar of flower same ok. So, the carry flag that you can use it for the next instruction we using a sub carry subtract with the carry this you will be doing it for the subsequent higher bird words that you are separating from ok. And why do you have to do a S here also because you want this instruction also to impact the flags so that you can do the next higher word operation. So, I have given you for example, sub here, but you can do the same thing with the add also ok. You have to do add S here and then ADC S here if you want to do multi word addition. So, this is the way this is performed ok. Now, reversal RSC is again just reverse similar to RSB, RSC is with the carry also you do, but operand 2 comes here and operand 1 comes here ok. And then these two are all Boolean operations R operation that is just a it performs an R operation between 1 and 2 and this what does it do it gives a complement of this and then ends it with the operand 1. So, I will tell you what is the need for this ok this is to clear off some bits ok in a particular positions we want to clear some bit you need to whatever bits you want to do clear initially that you will be mentioning it here and then you do a, do a not then those bits will become 0 and when you add it with them the operand 1 those relevant bits will become 0 here. So, you are effectively clearing those specific bit position by mentioning them in the operand 2. So, this does this job I hope you are clear with this set of instructions I will show you some examples in the subsequent slides. Now, what are they this is actually this note is not relevant for this instruction ok please ignore this. When any of this test is done what does it do it actually does the AND operation with the both the operands operand 1 and operand 2 and based on the result it will impact the flags but it the result will not be written into any destination register. So, you will not be mentioning anything here it only takes two operands there are no you need to mention only two operands which need to be tested against each other and you will not be mentioning any RD the destination register. So, what does it mean test means it is actually comparing two values and sees whether they are same or not because when you hand it with the no the same bits the if they are set you will get the same value again ok. So, based on that it will set the flags and you will know that they are equal the values are same the bits are same test equal it what does it do this actually does the XR of that and then it compares whether the particular bits are all become 0 because when you extract the same value with the same other two such value then you will get the 0 here. So, if you are getting 0 flag set that means they are equal ok. So, that is the no job. So, compare is it is comparing two things that we actually it performs a subtraction and then flags are impacted and CMN is a actually it performs a add operation and then impact the flag. So, Basically, these instructions are provided where you want to look at the flag, but you do not want to really perform a chain, you know, you are not interested in the outcome of these values, ok. Only the flags you want, but not the actual uh, result coming out of this instruction, then you will use this, ok. This is about compare and test. Tests are called on the Boolean operation, as well as compare is performing a arithmetic operation, ok. Ok, let us see some examples that you make the things clear. The data processing operations may be classified as logical or arithmetic. The logical operations are all of them, ok, even the T Q and the test are logical operations, understand that ok. So, it is a working on the bit level, ok, it is not trying to understand the values of those bits, it just does a Boolean uh, arithmetic. Uh, Boolean operations like R, X, R, or and, and then affects the tidy flex if it is required or uh, other flex. Now, when you perform a Boolean or logical operations, always the overflow flag is unaffected. Well, overflow is 
useful only when you are doing a signed operation right. So, when you are doing a boolean operation there is no interpretation of signed or unsigned here right. So, because of that overflow flag will not be affected even if you have a S bit set in any of these instructions ok. Now, R D is not R is a special condition we will have another you know, last session we will be talking about that so let us not worry about that. Now, carry flag of course, this will be affected based on the if suppose you perform any shift left or rotate left or logical or arithmetic shift the bit last bit coming out will be impacting the carry flag ok. And uh, if it was LSL 0 I talked about this in the last session it will preserve the carry flag of the previous value whatever was the previous value ok. And 0 flag will be set if the result what you get in the end of the operation if it happens to be 0 you will get a 0 flag set ok. So, only this n flag will be when bit 31 is set. So, only these 3 flags will be affected by the logical operation, but not V flag. So, this you should remember and you should also know the reason for that. Okay. Now, let us see, take some time, just freeze for some time if you want more time, find out what is the right answer for this. Why is V flag unaffected by the logical data processing? It could be since V flag and C flag are always the same of any logical operation or because it will delay the execution of logical operation or V flag is valid only when the arithmetic operation is performed. I think in my discussion I have already told the answer. So, this is C ok. So, V flag plays no role when logical operations are performed you should remember in this ok. Now, I told you that compare and P Q there are two instructions what do they do and why are they why there are two instructions both doing the checking whether operand 1 and operand 2 are the same or not ok. Then what is the difference why is um, given as two instructions for this both do not write this result ok. You know that compare and T Q both will not write the result because R D is not mentioned. So, the in both I am telling you both are equal in the in these two aspects. Now, we will see where is the difference coming. There is a minor difference in their behavior. Compare affects all the flags, why it does the subtract operation internally, right? And then the result is not written, but it performs a subtract operation. Operate operand 1 is subtracted from operand, sorry, operand 1 minus operand 2 it does, okay. That is what I have to say. So, operand 1 minus operand 2. So, and you know any arithmetic operation will affect all the 4 flags. So, compare does that. So, it will affect all the 4. Again you should remember irrespective of whether S is mentioned or not actually compare always affects the flags. It is not based on S that is one important thing about compare and test. These instructions even CMN as well as the other test ES other uh, instructions the four instructions which do the comparison job they always affect the flags irrespective of whether S is mentioned or not. Some compiler some assemblers may crib if you may give warning or error if you put S some may accept it, but internally the they they set the S ok. Those are the flags are set that is one important point I missed out in the last slide. So, E Q affects all the flags except V flag. So, that is a difference you see suppose then why there are two instructions use T E Q when you need to preserve the state of V flag while performing E quality check. Suppose you want to perform E quality check you have an option to choose one of this instruction. Then if you are dependent on the previous value of V flag then you better use T E Q because if you do the compare that will may be that may be overwritten by this operation. So, if you want this to be preserved perform T E Q so that you can use that in a subsequent instruction. How do you use it? Maybe you will you will put a less than or greater than signed values. You can compare, and then based on that you can choose to execute an instruction or not. So, if you are using this flag, remember to use TEQ before that if it is needed. If you want to do a comparison job. Okay. So that's all about uh, logical operations. Now let us 
talk about arithmetic these are the things why this compare and the compare and is also listed under the because they are internally performing the subtract operation which I told you. So, they also fall under this category they operate on 32 bit integer of course, because that is a width of our registers. Now, one thing I have mentioned earlier, but I am discussing on this point only the programmer or the compiler. So, why compiler? Because if suppose you have declared an unsigned in u, the name of the variable is u, and then signed in yes, you have declared two variables with, with one being unsigned and another being signed. And then you do a addition or subtraction, and then you are comparing whether this one is more or less. You are comparing unsigned values or signed values. While writing the program, you might have mentioned the variables to be unsigned or signed. Then compiler knows that okay, this variable is signed or the other one is unsigned, and then it will accordingly choose which flag to look for when it has to do a comparison. Okay. As far as the processor is concerned, what is stored in a register is an integer of course, that is the bit integer, but it does not know whether it is holding a signed value or unsigned value. So, the processor when it is performing any any arithmetic operation it will impact both the flags based on how you are going to interpret. So, it, it, it does not know that whether what you have really put inside the uh, register is an unsigned integer integer because the representation is how you interpret the value is different in case of unsigned or signed. So, any arithmetic operation will impact both the flags and you are free to choose one of them based on what you know about those variables ok. So, this is very important point remember that. Now, now again I told you that any of the arithmetic operations also can be followed with uh, appended with a yes or no. If there is an yes, then the assembler when it is generating the binary of uh, of code for this, it will put that yes bit set inside the instruction. So, then processor will know that ok when I am doing this I need to impact the flags ok. So, if yes bit is set only we will be talking about this flag otherwise in none of these instructions change the values of the flags condition flags. So, B flag will be set only when the overflow occurs if the values interpreted were two complement value. One more thing I you need to remember that internally ARM processor I think most of the processors in the market negative numbers are represented as two complement and they are treated like two complement the arithmetic what it does is a two complement if it is a negative value it is a two complement form ok. If suppose if you are maintaining one's complement and then you are trying to put that value into it, if your interpretation is one's complement and actually processor is two's complement, then you will have a different values. So you should remember that most of the processors are most setting in the market, everything treats the negative values as two's complement. So when you are treating the signed integers, you need to treat it as a two's complement value. If it is negative, you are to if MSB is set you will complement all the bits and add one to it to find out the magnitude of the negative value ok. C flag is set if this very simple if bit 31 is set the C flag will set. So, these are all the results which are coming out of the instruction ok not the operands this is a after the operation is performed what is the result and based on those conditions these flags will be set provided S is there and N flag is set if MSB is set. So, you may interpret if based on the n flag if we are to have the two's complement then it is shows the negative value ok that is it. So, this is all about how arithmetic operations impact the flag let us see some more details of it add in section adds the value on R n with the operand 2 and R m that is the operand 2 is it could be a register coming from R m or it could be immediate. 12 bit why I put a 12 here plus you, you know that the immediate constant value whatever is the space provided for the instruction by the instruction is only 12 bits of constant or combination of both suppose you are doing a shift operation then you will have a constant associated with the RM will be a operand 2 ok. The subtract instruction does the same thing only thing is it does operand 1 minus operand 2. So, operand 2 is again coming from any of these. Now, reverse subtract 
is operand 2 minus operand 1 ok. This is useful because barrel shifter has more operation for operand 2 ok. That is why if you want to do a, a operand 2 minus operand 1 and but I you want to do more uh, barrel shifter operations on the operand 2 here then you will be able to perform this using this instruction R verse operand. So, you can do along with the carry if you want to do a multiple arithmetic you can use any of this instruction this will be covered ok an example for this multiple arithmetic will be covered soon ok within a few seconds or minutes. Now this is what add C is instruction adds the value of R and operand 2 ok together with the carry flag. So, if carry flag is set then one more will be added to this value. If it is 0 it is same as add there is no difference if there is no carry flag if carry flag is 0 the addition of R n plus operand 2 will be same as what you would have got with the add, but if carry flag is set it will be one more than what you got with the add. Now, subtract with carry it is the same impact the carry flag borrow is there then it would have done it, but internally because carry flag is clear because of uh, if borrow, borrow is there the carry flag is clear the result is reduced by 1 ok it is a reverse because of the implementation I mentioned earlier and that is true with RSV reverse subtract with carry. And one more thing just wanted to caution you that the assemb assembler may substitute some different value different instructions. So, when you are reading the disassembly listing of the instruction you may have to and uh, more than assembler the compiler may do that ok you may not you may expect some instruction to be there but it may have something different because it would have optimized something. So, when you try to understand the assembly listing of what you have got from the compiler output you may have to think about what are the changes it has done Maybe you no, know, uh, there may be some dependency on the previous instructions also you may have to read the complete flow to understand if there are any differences in the instruction being used by the compiler ok. Very good. Now, let us see a multi word arithmetic. So, simple addition all of us are aware. So, just wanted to give you an example of a multi word arithmetic that is suppose you want to perform a 64 bit integer addition. So, how first of all how will you store a 60 bit 64 bit values when you have the registers which are only 32 bit wide you will split the 64 value bit value into 2 the ls part of the word the least significant word is stored can be stored in one register. So, in our example we are stored like this ok. So, we have two sets of registers one is stored here and another one is stored in this registers and you are subtracting it. Now, oh sorry here you are adding it now when you are adding it what is happening is first R 0 and R 2 ok. You remember the the format of instructions this is R D destination register this is operand 1 and this is operand 2. So, this is operand 1 this is operand 2 and it is subtracted uh, sorry add is added operand 1 is added to operand 2 and result is written into R 4. Now, why is this S is given it is very important you have to give S because you are based on this addition if you do this r plus r 0 plus r 2 there may be a carry from the result which should also be added with this to get a correct value otherwise you will get a two additions, but it, it will not be correct. It is simple as you know when you have 12 plus 19 if you do 9 plus 2 if you add after that that one carry has to be added with this you know simple area our uh, uh, school days we have studied about the addition. So, that is true with the multi word arithmetic also. So, when you are adding this this are single uh, 64 bit words. So, when you add these two anything coming out carry has to be given to these values to be to get the final result which is correct. So, you need to use add c add with the carry you have to use and very important that you have to put yes if you miss out on this yes whatever is the previous value of carry flag will be taken by this instruction. So, you may get a correct result sometime and you may get something wrong at some other time because it de purely depends on what was the state of carry flag before it came here. So, these two are uh, you know adjacent instructions and uh, you know you should not put any other instruction in between which affects the flag 
and you should perform this one after the other and make sure that yes is there. Now add with carry also you are free to put yes or not, but I have put yes here because any result will be valid only if suppose even this also overflows and you need to look at the carry fact to see that this is for the addition is either overflow or not, but it is not mandatory if you know that I am not going to exceed the limit of 64 yeah you free to do it, but it is always better to make it a habit to do this because it is not going to add any delay or anything to your execution of the instruction it is only later on you can decide to use those flags conditional flags based on the requirement. So, this is a safe way of programming in assembly. Now, I want you to just hold on pause the presentation and then try to map this instruction scene to a 96 bit operands ok. What I showed you is 60 per bit this is 32 and this is 32. So, adds up to 64 suppose I have a, a multi word I want to perform a 96 bit operation here I am interested in subtract ok. Now, how do you map these registers you see a lot of registers here how do you map them into this this 9 registers have to fit into one more column you have to add and then you have to map them. I want you to map these two values and the result value also so that when you are writing this multi word arithmetic you are clear about how to mention the operands. If you if you modify change them sequence you will get different results. I hope you have already tried it out let me show you hope what you have tried and what you are seeing is correct. See here this is whenever you are doing any arithmetic as a school school days we have learned you have to perform the arithmetic from this end right, right to left. So, you have to perform the operation on the lower significant words. So, that is what is given as a parameter. So, which is operand 1 we know based on the arms instructions format R operand 1 is this that is why R 6 is here subtract it from operand 2 sorry uh, always uh, mention it wrongly. So, R 9 is separated from R 6 that is operand 2 is separated from operand 1. So, R 6 minus R 9. So, you have to be careful and where the R 3 goes I am not shown here where does it go it is a result. So, let me show R 3 comes here now R 7 minus R 10 and the result R 4 sits here R 8 minus R 11 and the result goes to R 5 ok. One more and of course, the instructions need to be careful you cannot put sub here you have to put sub C SBC along with carry and here also SBC and S here is a must ok. If you do not do it then any carry coming a borrow from here will not be reflected for the when you are doing a third set of operation. So, this S is a must and this is optional if you want after the result is found you are interested in what has happened to the result you can put yes, but this two are important ok. So, take some sample values of this and then put them in registers and then see the result ok. Now, another thing what you notice here is these registers are all sequential right R 6 R 7 R 8 R 9 R 11 is it required? is that we need to be very sure that when you are doing the operand R 6 should be here and then the next higher power register should be there actually not. You can use any registers you want provided you do not overwrite on them then results you nobody can predict, but as long as you are not overwriting any of these values and you are careful when you are overwriting also ok, then you will be able to see the proper value. Here you see R 9 is there in two places will it impact see here operand 1 operand 2 this is operand 1 this is operand 2 it is performing the subtraction here and the flags are already affected. Now, this result I want to write it in R 6 that is fine. Now, R 2 and R 1 is subtracted and the result is written into R 9. Now, what happens this is actually overwriting on one of the operands, but it is ok because this operation is already performed. So, you are not 
you don't need this value anymore. So you are free to modify it, but you have to be careful when you are reusing any of the registers. But okay, and then R8 and R11 is written into R2. Now you see here these values or registers are all arbitrary. There is no any inherent sequence as it was in the earlier example. So why I mention this is you should remember that the ARM processor or typically in, you know um, any you know any, any of these operations are performed here it does not take any sequence between this you know whether you are ordering them in a particular sequence or not it just just does what you are given here ok. So, as long as you do not overwrite which is required for the next addition or subtraction you are free to use any registers you want they treat them as a two operands to the operation that is all. But please remember that S is a must in these two cases of course ok I hope you have understood the multiple arithmetic here I want you to perform do this with some different values both positive and negative sign and sign and then see the results for you to be sure about this ok. Now, it is a interesting part of the discussion R15 why R15 is so unique because this is a program counter because this is pointing to the instruction being executed, but the freedom that we have with ARM is this is also part of the register file though it has got separate read and write ports to enhance the performance it can be treated as any other operands to any other data processing instructions, but you have to be careful about what you are doing with this otherwise you will get an unpredictable result. So, you have to have a clear idea when you are using R15 in your instruction you should have a clear idea of what to expect and you should, unless you understand the pipeline and how internally the values are the PC are modified you will not be able to use it efficiently and correctly. So, please pay attention to this adding any to register values and a constant you could use PC for RN ok this is allowed if you use PC as RN or RM ok you can use RN and RM also we have shown only this example so I have given you can have RD also I will tell you um, how to be careful about what, what you need to be careful about. Now, suppose you are using it as RN and RM what is the difference between this RN is the operand which is coming straight from the register file and RM is a through the barrel shifter. So, it treats R15 as a generic any other register. So, it can read from the, the instruction can read from the register file, but I am saying the value is current instruction plus 8 this I have touched upon this when I talked about pipeline if you remember there are three stages in the pipeline in ARM 7 and first is fetch ok maybe I will draw ok fetch next stage is decode and third stage is execute. Now, you have to remember when is the operands for the operation whatever you are performing is read from register file. If you remember correctly it is done at the executive stage execute stage ok whereas, in ARM 7 it is done in a decode stage ARM 9 in a 5 stage pipeline, but here let us restrict to ARM 7 now and then there are 3 stages and the operands are read during this execute stage. So, if R15 happens to be one of the operands, where is the R15 pointing when a particular instruction is in this stage? You remember before this instruction comes here, the next instruction is already inside the pipeline, which is in decode stage, and next to that, whatever instruction is there that is already fetched and it is in the fetch stage. Now, where does R15 point to? when you have in section 1, in section 2 and then in section 3 suppose 3 instructions are there you are executing an, in, an operation here add ok and then you are using the R15 as 
a operand here okay maybe rn or rm to write it into rd when are you reading all our pc okay this is pc when are you reading this pc when you are in the execute stage of this instruction but by the time r15 is pointing at this two instruction down the line so each instruction you know that it is occupies four bytes each right four bytes not bits okay and let me write b so it has already advanced by if suppose this was 1000 1004 1008 so plus 8 it has gone that is why when during the execute stage when in this instruction is interested in reading the operand and if this operand happens to be r15 it will not get the its own address where it is residing it will get the 4 bytes 8 bytes and always it is in the increasing order always pc is incremented so it will be 4 bytes more than 8 bytes more than the current instruction remember 8 bytes more than the current instruction okay so if you are performing any operation on and taking the r15 as a operand you have to remember this this actually you should take you to the even the pipeline you should remember the pipeline what is exactly happening you should not just mug up that oh okay whenever i am using r15 i should have 8 here you know whatever i am getting is plus 8 no it is because of this reason please remember that because this pipeline different these are the pipeline stages i have gone okay because of this and the operand is being read only in this stage you will get a value which is 8 bytes more than the address of the current instruction okay i hope this is very clear to you all okay let us see two examples so that you is clear to you uh, if you are using a pc as a rd okay what suppose rd is what the destination register the execution branches to the address corresponding to the result it is true right when after the any arithmetic operation or a move operation you have change the value of r15 because you are using that as a destination register that means whatever you are writing you want that is you want that to say to the processor that i am writing a new address to you please pick, pick the instruction from there so it is supposed to do that so whenever rd is modified it will start executing the instruction which is stored in that address suppose if you use s flag suffix is a separate interpretation for that i will talk about it later when it is appropriate so just for a moment you ignore this you can use sp also for r what is sp the r13 okay remember r13 is another special treatment is for treated as a stack pointer so you can also use sp there is no um sorry there is no restriction okay so i hope you understood this so let us see few examples for you to understand this now assume that our zero is holding a 1000 value zero uh, x 1000 okay this x is a value our one is having 04 now i am interested in performing this operation i am i am interested in loading the r15 with the new value so what happens r0 is 1000 so it just simply adds 4 to that and then writes into it now remember that you need to be careful in whenever you are changing the value of r15 here it is a arm processor arm mode so we are not talked about thumb mode at all so let us in this arm mode the lower two bits of the addresses stored in r15 are zeros because it's always four byte aligned instruction it is going to fetch so you have to make sure that you don't change those convention okay because different processes may implement in a different way and then you might get a different uh, results and and it, no side effect so you have to make sure that the resultant value what you get should not have the lsb two bits the lower two bits bit 0 and bit 1 should not be set it should be zeros then in the arm mode okay we remove this i'm very very particular about that in the arm mode you have to take care of that some mode is totally different which we will talk about it when 
uh, I talk about you know when we touch upon the come mode in specification. So here you so I, what I am trying to say is you should not add two or three to it. Okay, R one you know R one one you are thousand one if you write into it. Some processors may ignore the two bits and then access it from thousand four or you know thousand only, but it is not a good programming practice. Warrants that you don't do this. Okay. That's why I am telling you that whenever you are changing R15, it is not like any other register. It's a something to do with the program counter. So you will immediately see if you are running this code in your simulator, you can immediately see that the execution jumps to the address what it is pointing at. Okay, so the difference between this and this is an S is added, of course. Then you will see that the flags are affected. Why all four flags are affected? Because you are doing your add operation, of course. And then the the result is same. It actually moves to thousand four only, both cases. But the only thing is the flags are also impacted because of this instruction. Now another example. Suppose this is very you now I have complicated a little bit. I am reading from R fifteen, okay, and then adding it to R two, and writing into. R15. So here uh, uh, we are doing a subtract operation. So I am R15 is taken. Okay. When this instruction is executed, when it is in execute stage, the value of R15 at that moment is taken as one operand, which is directly taken as RM. And then RM is just R2, which happens to be eight here. So you are taking R2, and now R15 is subtracted R15 minus R2 and then the result is written into R15 again. So PC value is taken and subtracted from whatever the value of R2 and then written back. Now what do you expect here? If you remember just now I mentioned that what you see in R15 is the not the address of this instruction it is plus 8. Okay. So because it has R15 has already advanced because of the pipeline prefetching, it is now trying to prefetch 8 by ahead. So effectively, what are you trying to do here? From this address, wherever it is now 8 by plus 8 by it is, you are subtracting minus 8 from there. So effectively, you are bringing back the value of R15 into the same instruction. So I urge you to write this code. You make sure that. No, you do not have to do this precondition because already R2 in anyway is there. Only R2 you make sure it is move R2, comma 0x, 0 0 to 8 you do and then perform this and see what happens. You will see that the simulator will not move from this instruction because every time when it executes this instruction, it is bringing the R2 thing back to its own instruction. So the pipeline will be fresh flushed again it will be loaded with the same instruction and then it results in the same value because what are you trying to do whenever R15 is going ahead you are bringing it back to this location again it goes back and again so you will be continuously in this loop. So this is a very good example to try it out is try this and understand it why it is happening what I explained in the previous slide is the reason for it ok. So because operands are read during the execute phase, the R15 has already advanced by 8 bytes. I am again summarizing it. So, R15 has already advanced by 8 bytes because it has already fetched two instructions one is in decode stage, and another new one, what you see, this fetching is in fetch, fetch more stage. At that moment, you are taking the value of R15, taking a snapshot of that value, and trying to subtract it from subtract the value uh, by R2 when you subtract R2 which R2 happens to be 8 so you are bringing the value back to the address of this instruction so it will come back to this and then it will continuously be in infinite loop ok. I hope this is very clear to you now one more example instead of doing it from R2 you could do also from the immediate value both have the same effect only thing is it is coming as an immediate constant. Okay, again subtraction. What happens if you do an addition here? It is here, it will go to another two bytes ahead. So you will jump four instructions and then start executing it further. 
So I urge you to try different things, but only thing is you have to have valid instructions. Maybe what I what you can do is write your assembly code with lots of move instructions. Maybe 10 to 10 move instructions to R1, R2, R3. You move different values into R1, R2, R3. Maybe to have a clear idea, R0 you move it to R0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that, and then try to in between you squeeze in this instruction and you change the instead of subtract add add it or instead of 8 you do some other addition but please make sure that it is always divisible by 4 this constant and it should not be more than 12 bits because you remember the immediate constant cannot be more than 12 bits if you do that you will be able to see the where does R15 go and if it crashes that means you have updated to the wrong value. So, debugging will be very difficult when you are modifying R15 value. So, you need to be very careful about this ok. Another example I will show you R13 you know that it is a stack pointer is already with 0 1000 sorry 0x 1000 and then we are adding with 4. So, it is same no R13 is also keep in the same way no difference ok and you could add it with a constant also you will get the same result you know it will jump to 1004 it is a constant jump. So, 0 x 1004 whatever instruction is there it will start executing from there and uh, what does it do here I am just showing you that you could also have a direct shifter operation some logical shift right with whatever is the content of R3 you do this you will get again 8 bytes ok. I want you to try out all these instructions and see yourself what happens. Now, one question. Okay, when R15 is used as one of the operands, as I showed you in one of the previous examples, can it can its value be more than plus i compared to the address of the executing multi-cycle instruction? What I mean by multi-cycle instruction? It could be is load or store multiple bytes ok or it could be a mul instruction ok or add in you know um, any instruction with executes for more time actually even it could be a R S um, if you are using R S as a register for shifting operation ok. Assume that an instruction which takes more cycles because suppose if you are doing multiple store you will be having a different memory cycles ok. So, the execution stage is not completed in one cycle it could take more than one cycle if that is the case can R15 be more than plus 8 and the current address think for a while what happens in ARM 7 TDMI with the three stage pipeline if a particular instruction takes no cycle to execute what happens will R15 go further see we start with two uh, any instruction needs to cross two stages to come to execute stage. So, two cycles are already done. So, it is implemented by A. Now, what I am asking is in the execute stage if that instruction takes more cycles because it is a multiple store. So, there will be more store uh, memory cycles will be involved in storing or loading the values from the memory during that time can R15 go beyond 8 bytes and now keep on accessing instructions down the line think for a while ok. No ok now I told that it is no so can you reason it out after hearing this if suppose you thought it is yes. So, let us see this quiz is about I am sorry the answers are ok options are about ok this quiz is about the reason for that I said that ok it cannot be more than 8, but why let us see one by one operands for the instructions are read from register file earlier than execute stage of the pipeline I am not making any whether I am not saying that either it is true or not. It is because I am saying it cannot go beyond 8 because the operands are read the R15 is read earlier than the execute stage ok. So, it cannot change even if multi cycle instruction is executed 
um, whatever you are at from the register file stays same, right? It cannot be more. It can't keep on changing based on the cycle instruction. Even if multi cycle instruction is being executed, pipeline is stalled until the current instruction is completed because of which the instruction prefetch cannot happen not more than two instruction ahead. What I am saying is even if this instruction in particular execute stage whatever instruction is there it takes multiple cycles to complete can R15 proceed further it cannot because unless this instruction goes out of execute stage the decode stage instruction cannot move into execute stage and the fetch cannot move to decode and the new instruction cannot come in. So, what I am saying is the pipeline will be stalled if any one instruction takes more cycles. So, that is one reason. Another one is even if R15 is added by more than 8 bytes, its old value is maintained in temporary location. I am saying that the other option says that R15 is stored in a temporary location somewhere. So, because of which the old value is maintained, that plus 8 is there. So, it cannot be more than plus 8. So, again, read this question as well as answers and then come to a consensus which one is correct, ok. It may be equally confusing all of them or you may be clear about the option to choose <coughs> ok. The correct option is B because there are more explanation for this. So, that should be the reason if you are thought there are more lines are there that the option should be correct please do not do this next question I may have totally different combinations. So, the reason being the pipeline is stalled when a particular instruction in execute stage takes more cycles to complete the good example will be multiple store or multiple write read or load or load or multiple store or load. The R15 also stops because we cannot fetch any more instructions because decode stage also freezes or fetch stage also freezes until this execute stage whatever instruction is executed is completed. So, R15 cannot go beyond 8 bytes. I am talking about ARM 70 DMA, not for the future processors, there may be some processors, implementation will be different. So, this, this particular discussion is only for this, ok. Ok, now let us talk about the implemented cycle times of each instruction, ok. Normal data processing one sequential cycle. Why is it one sequential cycle? I told you that pipeline has short, you know, instruction keep coming in, then the effective throughput of throughput will be one instruction per cycle. If there are no stalls or if there are no flush, then you will see that every one in cycle, sequential cycle one instruction will be coming out of the pipeline. So, effectively any data processing instruction will normally take one S, S is sequential cycle, N is non sequential and I this is I which is internal cycle. If you remember I have explained about this cycle earlier, sequential cycle is if the instructions are accessed from the sequential addresses it will involve some time which is equivalent to sequential cycle because memory is provided with a subsequent sequential addresses, non sequential addresses because it is provided with a totally new address it has to fetch from a different location and there may be some delay in one based on the type of memory that you are interfacing with the processor. So, n is non sequential addresses how much time it takes and internal cycle is something the processor wants to do internally some operation which will does not involve any memory access. So, that is internal. Now, let us see uh, before we see the reasons I want you to even think about it why these are the timings given for different instructions. So, that you have a clear idea now let us see what is the reason for a data processing with a register shift specified shift. What I mean by register specified shift the shift value is not immediate constant it is stored in the lower 8 bits of a register if you remember RS. Ok. Now, when a register is holding the shift operation what constants you know how many shift operations need to be performed or rotate needs to be performed if it is held in the RS there is one cycle involved in first reading that register 
and then perform that operation ok on the RM and then feeding both RN and RM to the ALU. So, internally there will be one more cycle spent if there is a register specific shift in the instruction that means for the operand 2 if you had mentioned I my shift constant is in the RS that means if I put a add R 1 comma R 2 comma on uh, on R 2 comma R 3 that is the second operand you are saying that LHL R S that is R S may be some R 5 or something. So, if you are doing a shifting operation based on the content of the register another register then it will involve one more cycle ok. Now, if suppose a data processing is on PC that means RD is a PC what happened this instruction has changed the value of PC once the PC value is changed a non sequential cycle is started because it is not same as the sequence where the current instruction is going. So, there will be a one non sequential cycle because it has to fetch a new instruction and flush the pipeline and fetch a new instruction by performing a non sequential cycle with the memory and get it into the pipeline. Now, where does it get that instruction it cannot directly get it into the execute state it has to get it into the fetch state then one more cycle two more cycle will be elapsed the fetch state and then it will take one more uh, cycle to for that instruction to come to decode state then only it will come to execute state. So, the next instruction which is fetched by based on the PC value new PC value return will will experience a delay of two sequential cycles see again this particular reason is because of the pipelining I am not blaming the pipelining because it you are getting a so much of performance in a normal flow of sequence, but when you are changing the flow when you are flushing the pipeline anyway we have to live with the delay involved. So, any performance no pain with or no no gain without pain right. So, you have to live with this 2 years delay because you are changing the instruction from where you have to fetch the next instruction it is not the next sequential instruction. So, you have to flush the pipeline which has already the two instructions which are coming to the pipeline have to be flushed and the new instruction has to be fetched. So, that is the reason. Now, this is you are doing a register shift operation also to find the value new value of PC you are trying to find, but you are doing some register shift operation along with that. That means, you will have a one more internal cycle because of the register shift always there is a one internal cycle. So, that is also added to this. So, it is a combination of the second and third ok. I hope this is clear to you. Now, before we end the session some examples I want you to now by now you must be familiar with all the instructions whenever you see an instruction you should be able to you should come on your mind ok what is happening here. you should not be reading the nobody will be there to write the comment because you are supposed to write the comment when you are writing assembly code. So, whenever the familiar assembly instructions you see you should get in your mind that what is happening this is that is very important to get familiarized with the reading assembly instruction. So, I urge you to read lot of instructions and uh, see what is happening there. Now, spend some time in understanding each instruction there is no sequence it is all independent instructions, but are given here to see your understanding. So, add EQ does it is that flag is set please remember EQ is there 0 flag is set then this is added and put into R please you should you know about by now you should have got this what is TQS does it tests R 4 equality with the 3 and the S is in fact redundant as the assembler inserts it automatically what I mean by that is even here as a programmer you have mentioned yes or if you do not mention yes also anyway it is going to impact the condition facts because all come CM compare instruction and test instruction affect the conditional flags. So, S is redundant here. So, lengthy 
but you should be familiar now after having listened to the last section. See here register specified shift is given whatever is the lower byte of R2 is taken that much of logical shift right is performed on R7 so it is very easy LSR takes the offset value instead of hash 0 x and constant it is taking from R2 and you should remember that it is a lower byte of R2 and then that many times it is going to do this operation on R7. So, now operand 2 is prepared that operand 2 is then something with R5 based on this instruction. So, R5 is subtracted R5 minus this value is written into R5 ok. Now, what does this do? This does just R14 is moved into PC. So, this basically normally when you are calling a, we are not covered that. So, that is why you may it may not be familiar to you, but R14 is a link register we will talk about it later, but uh, it actually at this moment you can think that whatever R14 is pointing at it will start executing from that location ok. Now, what is the difference between these two? The only thing is this does not impact with flags and this impacts it that is it. Apart from that there is one uniqueness about this ok. Um, it will be clear to you when I talk about modes let me explain here this is very specific because I told you earlier that I will explain this in second. Normally when there is a mode change or exception has happened it the previous value suppose one instruction has caused an exception then the address of the next instruction which is supposed to be executed will be stored in R4 this is length automatically and at that time even the flags are also copied into the new SPSR register this is a stored program status register ok of the new mode. So, when this is executed from the new mode it is copying both the new value of PC from R14 and then the old CPSR which was stored in SPSR is also restored back. Um, for this moment if you do not understand do not fret I will talk about it when we have a discussion on mode changes and how exceptions are handled during that time this will become clear, but you have to remember that this is a specific special instruction which does something more ok. So, that is enough for now. So, with this we are completing the session 8 we have touched upon logical data processing instruction then all the arithmetic data processing instruction and what are the flags get affected by each of them and how to perform multi word arithmetic and then we talked about how PC could be used in the data processing we saw few examples too. So, this is the right time where you have more instructions in your hand that means you are familiar with more instructions and more different ways of writing them. So, this is the time for getting into a serious assembly programming and we will we'll be given with lots of assembly uh, sorry lab uh, assignments and uh, you will be able to enjoy these sessions in the lab ok. I hope this session was useful and thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you in the next session have a nice day thank you.